Okay, well, the Alpha, Beta, Gamma paper was one of the it was the forerunner really for one of the sort of cornerstones of, of modern cosmology. So nuclear synthesis, that's what we're talking about. That's how the elements, basically the building blocks of everything, were created. Um, so in the early universe and later on in stars. So this is what alpha, beta and gamma were trying to, trying to do. Um, so in particular, big band nuclear synthesis, we're talking about what was going on really in the first three minutes of the universe. So this is really early times and really hot times. So in particular, what was happening there was is the lightest elements were getting created. That's hydrogen, helium, lithium, maybe a little bit of beryllium. And there are various processes that were going on at that time. And I've got my fruit to sort of describe that. Go on, so, no, I'm, I'm zoomed in the front. Okay, cool. So in particular, let's just forget the orange for a second. Let's focus on the tangents. Uh, we've got a proton and we've got a neutron. And we've also got an elect that's an electron and a neutrino. So a neutrino is exactly what it says on the tin. It's a little neutral one. So the process that, well, one of the processes that we're interested in the very early universe, literally we're talking from about one second after the Big Bang, is where a proton and an electron combine and form a neutron and a neutrino. And this process can work in both directions. So up until sort of, you know, until the temperature of the universe drops till about 10 to the 11 Kelvin, so we're talking like literally 100 billion Kelvin, uh, this process is in thermal equilibrium. So you've sort of, you've got, you can keep track of how many neutrons and protons are constantly getting created and destroyed. And then at some point, basically when the temperature drops to 10 to 11 Kelvin, this process freezes out. Okay, so what do we mean by freeze out? We mean essentially think of water freezing. So water freezes because there's not enough thermal energy around it to sort of stop the crystals from forming. And it's kind of the same here. As the universe cools, so as the universe expands, it cools down. Just think of a gas. If you sort of expand the gas, it starts to cool down. So as the universe cools, it, it, and as it expands and it cools, this, the thermal energy that's available to these processes drops. And eventually, the rate of this reaction becomes so great, it's become so low, essentially, that it takes so long for this reaction to happen that you can just forget about it altogether. It shuts down completely, it freezes out. Then what happens? So then what happens? Now, 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 so now you think, right, okay, I've got all these neutrons and protons that are left over at this point, and that situation shouldn't really change. Um, and at that time, the ratio of neutrons to protons is sort of one to six. So you've got six protons for every one neutron. Okay, now that would be great, except there's a problem now. The thing is, now, we don't have this process going on, but there is another process which can go on, and that's that the neutrons can decay. So we have to worry about this now. And the neutrons decay. We don't need any more fruit here. We can just describe the neutron decay. The neutrons decay into, start for the neutron, it decays into a proton, electron, and a neutrino. This is called beta decay. This process takes about 15 minutes. So now you have an issue. You had all these neutrons that were knocking around, one for every six protons. They're going to start decaying now. Now, if they continue to decay for 15 minutes, you're going to have no neutrons left over, and therefore you're going to have nothing with which to build the elements, to build us, essentially. So something's got to happen before that 15 minutes is up. And it does, and it happens at three minutes. At three minutes after the Big Bang, this happens. So we forget about these two now. Electrons and the, and the neutrino are gone. The neutron and the proton combine to form an orange. Well, it's not an orange, really. It's a deuterium, which is a kind of heavy hydrogen. Okay, so earlier on, at temp you know, sort of earlier than three minutes, so at three minutes, the temperature of the universe is about 10 to the 9 Kelvin. That's a billion Kelvin. Before that, when the neutron and the proton tried to form deuterium, there was too many photons. The photons were too energetic. They immediately destroyed the deuterium and give you back your neutron and the protons. But when the temperature falls, this process is allowed to happen. Okay? And you start to form stable deuterium. And then at that point, now your neutrons are trapped. Okay? They're no longer going to decay. They're trapped inside the nucleus of the deuterium atom. So a neutron won't decay if it's in an atom? If it's stored in, yeah, okay, it's been bound by the strong interaction that's controlling what's going on in the nucleus of that deuterium atom. And at this point, the ratio of neutrons to protons is now of 1 in 7. And from now on, the deuterium combined to form things like helium and lithium. And we can work out, just from that 1 to 7 ratio, this is a challenge for people who are watching this, 
you can work out that um, roughly 25% of the universe will be made of helium and 75% will be made of hydrogen. I mean, to work that out, you just realize that, you know, you, in each helium atom, you've got two neutrons and two protons. Each hydrogen atom, you've got one proton. The ratio is one to seven. Work it out. Okay. Now, what's amazing, so th and this is actually what we see. We roughly see, more or less, see that it's 25% helium, 75% uh, hydrogen. So it's kind of a remarkable prediction that's been verified. Uh, one of the great successes of, of the standard cosmology. And what I want to sort of just want to add, just, you know, as a final point is sort of the critical things that are going on here that, that are key to making this happen. For example, if the strong interaction, which controls this process of, of the neutrons and the protons combining to give deuterium, if the strong interaction were a little bit weaker than it actually is, okay, the neutron would decay into the proton into the proton, the electron, and the neutron, and all the decay would happen before deuterium got the chance to form. So you never would have formed deuterium had the strong interaction been a little bit weaker. And then you would never have formed helium, and then you never would have formed carbon in stars, you never would have formed us. Similarly, if the strong interaction were a little bit stronger, something else would have happened. You still would have formed deuterium, but also protons would have combined with other protons to form diprotons. And what that means is you never would have got hydrogen. There would have been no hydrogen. It would have all been stored in diprotons and heavier things. And so that would mean you had no water. And if we have no water, well, we get very thirsty. So it's kind of, it's kind of amazing that the conditions were so perfect right at the beginning of the universe that the strength of the strong interaction is, is what it is, that actually we were able to form helium and then lithium and then so on and everything we need to, to make up us. Anyway, this was the first evidence for the Big Bang. But after a while, nobody believed it. And nobody believed it. So he pointed out in a later paper with somebody called Herman and with Gamow that when you got to this stage of the universe where everything is now made not of protons but of atoms of hydrogen and atoms of helium, then these are neutral and do not couple strongly to electromagnetic waves. So all the photons, the particles of light, the electromagnetic radiation, the flare that occurred right at the be beginning of the universe would have cooled down, would have hardly interacted with everything, and you would get remnants of that in, in oh, long wavelength electromagnetic radiation. So about 13 years later, uh, this whole subject has, has fallen out of favour. The Big Bang was not popular until Penzias and Wilson found experimentally that there was evidence of the Big Bang because they measured a background radiation which seemed to be of a temperature about 3 Kelvin. And this background radiation, at first they thought there was something wrong with their instrument. They couldn't believe that it was there. So they thought it was due to pigeon poo in their receiver. They tried everything before they actually believed it was a true signal. And eventually, they got the Nobel Prize for this work because it was the first really strong evidence for the Big Bang. And it really had a revolutionary effect in the sense that it changed people's conception of how the universe behaves. And with this evidence, they got the Nobel Prize and Alpha didn't get recognition at the time, but they did give him recognition when they gave their Nobel Prize lectures.